Hello there all, welcome back to EOS Acro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and now I'm going to show you how to add in some controls to our Rubik's Cube. I'm doing this in three parts and in the first one I'm going to show you how to separate the cube into different groups for easy rotation in the next one. So let's get started. Now to add in the kind of functionality I want on the cube, let me start by making a few changes. I'll change the lighting in my viewport to be a default headlight. This makes sure that I'm not overtaxing my system. And let me jump into the cube node itself. Here all the soft nodes are visible and uh, I don't want any of the cameras, the lights or any other detail visible. I can also go hide all other objects. Now to put in the kind of functionality we want on this Rubik's Cube, we need to be able to differentiate between which primitives belong to which layer, whether if a particular primitive belongs to the top, middle, bottom, right, left and so on. So to do this we are going to make use of the group nodes. So let me start by dropping one group node here. I'll also rename this group to be the top group because it's easier to understand. Now. By default it selects all the primitives in my object. I don't want this so I'll disable that option and switch over to the bounding section. It makes selecting all the different layers a lot easier. Now here if I just increase the size you can see that there is a bounding box which is going to help me with the selection. If I use my manipulator handle and move the bounding box around you can see it only selects the primitives which are completely enclosed within it. Now. What I want to do is select only the top section. As we know the entire cube is one unit in size. So because there are three sections of the cube, it means every section is going to be one third the total size. If I also go ahead just pull this bounding box only to the top, you can see the values are pretty close to 1 by 3, which is nothing but 0.333. I can just go type in the value 1 by 3. So this helps me get a proper selection only for the top section. Now we had replicated for all the different layers but first let's set up some procedural approaches here which are going to help us along the way. Now going around and making all the different selections for all the different layers is going to be a bit more time consuming. I want to make the process a bit more intuitive and easier to understand. So for that I'm going to make use of a simple expression which can take the actual node name which is there which is top here and put that as a name for the actual group. What this would do is if I will click on the group node you can see all these primitives which belong to a group called group 2 now would instead belong to a group called top. And because this group is supposed to be grouping the top, the whole thing becomes more intuitive and easier. The way I'm going to do this is let me click into this text field which has the actual name. I'll press Alt E. This opens the expression editor. Here I'll, I want to make use of the expression called OP name. This is a simple expression which gives the name of the node if we give the actual address. So the address of the node is given within parentheses as a string. So I have open brackets with quotes inside. And the node I want to make use of is the same node. Means wherever I'm giving the actual expression I want the same node which is a top. So for that I just need to give a simple dot. This expression stands for giving me the name of that particular node. Now if I try to hit apply it'll throw in an error. Error. The reason for this error is because this particular field is a text field. It's just expecting a proper name. It does not expect uh, all these brackets or dots and all these things. It does not know I'm giving an expression. Anytime I want to give an expression in a text field, I need to put in backticks. So here, I'll use the backtick key on the keyboard, which is right below the escape. I'll put one right before the expression starts and I'll put one right after the expression has ended. Now if I hit apply you should see the warning here goes away and also the banding on my note goes away. Hit apply, everything is done. Now if I middle click on my group node you can see all these primitives belong to a group called top. Not only that, if I change the name to something random you can now see that all of these primitives also belong to that particular group. The reason this is useful is now if I make several groups I just need to look at the name of the group to figure out which exact group am I working with. I don't need to make sure all the names are carried over. Everything just happens on its own. Now for the next step let's go ahead and create a few more groups. For that I'll just select the top group, copy paste that 
and we can see that 1 by 3 is the math value we have put in only on the y-axis. I can put the same value in x-axis and z-axis to get the other sides. So I'll just do that. I'll control shift click on the size and center which is going to get rid of the math value. Then I can control middle click on these values to get them back to the defaults. Now I'll go to the size x value and here 1 by 3. You can see it selects the uh, vertical going sections and I'll go 1 by 3 on center and this selects the right side let's say. I'll go ahead call this group right. Similarly I'll create another group for the front. I'll copy paste the right. I'll get rid of the expression from both these values and reset them. I'll put in 1 by 3 on the z-axis and I'm going to just call this front. Now I have all these three groups created. I want to create a couple of more groups so I'll just select all of these groups together copy and paste them. You can see I have several mode nodes coming out from just one single input. It would be much better if I create a subnet which we'll do in some time. Now the first one we have here is top whereas we want another section for the bottom so I'll just go change the center value to a negative number so it goes below and call it bottom. Next we have the right side which is nothing but going to be the left side this time. I'll put a negative value on the center and call it left. Same way for the last one which is going to be the back. As you can see all of my grouping is now created. Okay all so that's it for this particular video. I hope you guys are finding it useful. In the next one I'll be actually showing you how to manipulate the Rubik's Cube using a simple transform node and some controls. So in the meantime if you have any doubts, suggestions or critiques you can put them down in the comment section below the video and I'll get back to you. That's it for now. I hope you guys are having a great time. I'll see you in the next tutorial.